You are now tuned in to the Project 365 Experience. It is a really great pleasure of mine for me to welcome somebody that I've admired and seen a lot of her, um, how do you call them, achievements and just how she's been able to just keep up and just achieve new things in the game. Uh, Coach April Deuce, thank you so much for wel- for coming on to my podcast. Yeah, of course, man. Anything for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. So I don't want to waste no time. I want to dive straight into um your article. We there was an article that you were featured on. It was a CBC yeah. article where you were talking about there was a lack of training when it came to coaches. Mm-hmm. Where I wanted to know a little bit where did that come about and what did what did the idea start striking? Yeah, so I think um especially from a female perspective and I guess the the era of EDI. Um, the NCCP had reached out just because I have been um, and still currently a coach mentor for aspiring um, female coaches across the country. And mm-hmm. so through the program, they reached out uh, and asked, hey, did you, like CBC is doing an article on the lack of training for coaches and we want to talk more about the NCCP. It's just more of a collaborative piece. Um, and so essentially I was just asked questions based around what my thoughts were with, with the NCCP and its value when it comes to coach training, education, um, a little bit about my background and why I think it's important. So that's how the article came. But those who may not know, NCCP, what is it? Uh, the National Coaching Certification Program. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not limited to basketball. Uh, pretty much the government of Canada tries to streamline every sport, um, especially every sport that is played at a professional level. Uh, basketball, though, um, through Canada basketball, um, has been established for quite a number of years. Uh, and so, yeah, we're just trying to, we're trying to hopefully have everyone streamlined through the program. Um, not necessarily as a, you are qualified to coach piece, but more so, at least from my perspective, it's good to have a little bit of education from all aspects of like a holistic training environment. So from training and conditioning, how to load, um, how to manage that load uh, with your athletes and your team, et cetera. It's so funny as you're saying that because when um when I first started coaching, um, you know, first of all, I didn't know it was a, such a thing, right? And like I remember when um so when I was back in Montreal, you had to um complete a couple of the certification. You had to be certified before you'd be able to coach like playoffs and that kind of stuff, right? And I didn't really you know, I'm a young coach, I'm like, oh, what 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 is this yeah. for, you know? But then I started noticing that there was so much um, little things. And like you said, it wasn't really about the X's and O's, you know, it was more about like just understanding the impact that you could have the relationship from a player to a coach and how to manage that. Because there's a lot of situations that you have to be able to handle. Mm -hmm. And we take for granted how important it is to be a coach because a lot of, in a lot of situations, being a coach, you're, you're with the kids in a in a in a way that is more impactful than their own families. And that I find is yeah. kind of crazy. Like, but people don't really realize that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it the scare I think the scary part is, um, I definitely agree that with you in that we are very influential to the youth that we coach. Um because there's like your family if you think about it, it's like plainly your family is forever, right? Basketball mm-hmm. is not. And with basketball, there's a level of, or there's layers of like instant gratification. I need to like the hype, right? I need to be on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I need to have the highlight. Reel. I need to be committed to Duke. I want to play for UConn. Like 
all mm-hmm. of these layers and you see your coach as the pathway to that, especially mm-hmm. when you're not educated with the scene or the environment of like, what does recruitment look like at the next level? And how does my coach play a factor into that? And does my trainer, not necessarily my team coach, does my trainer train NBA players, pro players, NCAA players? Is it right? So it's like, we have just as much influence in, in that recruitment um, phase of, of your playing career at the youth level. So that's, it's really scary when you think about, it, you take a step back mm-hmm. and you're like, ha, huh, this is why you have your parents or you have your players sucking up to you or like mm-hmm. doing everything that you say, even though you would want them to do that is like, mm-hmm. just follow the, follow the game plan, work yeah. your ass off. Fly. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The actual influence that you have is, is a little crazy at the Insane. end of the day. Insane. 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 So, yeah. so like, I always love asking this question. Talk about um, female representation, right? Yeah. Talk. T- give uh, me. Give me everything. I don't know where. I don't know where to narrow this question because I know we could go in so many different ways. Because for me, anyways, it's just like as a. I love saying that whether it's like, like, whether it was something about like um, somebody who was maybe of a specific race. If somebody else is talking about this, they don't necessarily. Somebody else that is talking upon it is not really able to understand where that person is coming from. Same way from being no, um, as a woman, right? Like me, I have mm-hmm. my perspective on the, just by seeing and experience and talking with people. But mm-hmm. talk to me about your experience. Like, why is it important and where um, does this need to go? And right. has it changed since you've started? Mm-hmm. Um, I want to believe in my answer when I say things have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, although I, I do think that there is still a huge lack of female representation, whether it's as a head coach, an assistant, trainers, uh, statisticians, analysts, referees, like you name it, right? There's just going to be that. It's almost like it's still 80-20, mm-hmm. even though you want to say like, oh, it's closer to 60-40. Like, that's just not the truth, mm-hmm. um, at least from my perspective. And being a woman it part of it too is because we're so cerebral or so like we overanalyze, right? Like we're quote unquote Mm -hmm. known to overanalyze everything. Um, If I draw from my own example or from my own experience, I can easily tell you, yeah, like I was hired because I was qualified. Mm -hmm. Then the flip side of it is I was hired because there's no other female that they could have hired that is more qualified. And then I can Mm. flip it again and say, I know basketball enough. So they hired me. So now I'm like that check mark of, Oh, we're diverse. Mm. Right. So, and the, like the, the coin can be flipped so many ways. Um, I would say for me in particular, trying or like working my way up the coaching ladder if you if you want to call it that um has been very difficult because i feel as though if i were born in a different era so let's just say i was born five years earlier Mm -hmm. then i think my career would have i think i'd be farther in my career Mm -hmm. just simply because i was willing to get up and move and go everywhere else Mm -hmm. or now i'm growing up in an era where a lot of young coaches particularly males um, are not, they're either not staying here or they're not, they're, they're pursuing higher education. So they're able to get grad assistantships. Uh, they're willing to go and, you know, sleep on a couch and couch surf to work for free for an NBA team or a G League team or whatever the case is. Um, I've just grown into a path where I care about settling down sooner than later um, for whatever reasons that's just my path Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i feel as though if i reflect on the last i'll say the last five years Mm -hmm. of my life in coaching there was probably late so there's probably two instances or two places that i feel as though i was hired 
because I was actually qualified and that there was a sense of autonomy of like, here, this is your team or, Hey, these are your responsibilities. Go do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And there are only, there's less than five. I can probably name less than five male coaches or like managers or supervisors that truly like believed in my or believe currently in my ability to do whatever responsibilities or Mm -hmm. jobs that I that I have Mm -hmm. um so I'm always like I'm really trying to analyze like like did you hire me for this or like Mm -hmm. am I check mark like what is that Mm -hmm. and off court love everyone I work with on court I cannot say the same thing (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah plain and simple because yeah. Your actions will speak louder than words. And um, being a female in a predominantly male space, especially when I'm like, you know, Global Jam or like TMU, U Sports, I'm re- on recruiting to help, you know, TMU or mm-hmm. like whatever the case is. I'm often looked at as kind of like, yo, who is this? Mm-hmm. Or she's going to do, she's just going to do that. And like, apparently she's really good at it. Like, there's no mm-hmm. due diligence. There's no like, um, there's no vested interest of like, hey, what do you want to do? Okay, show me what you've done. Okay, cool. So based on this, like, let's talk about how we can maximize and how you can grow. There's also a lack of uh, investment in me as mm-hmm. a woman because I think, especially at the higher level, you really need a capacity to want to mentor somebody. Mm-hmm. And I find that with myself right now, mentoring a few other women in analytics, researching, whatever, coaching, it takes a lot of time, but at the same time, it's like, if I don't do this, then no one else would do this after me. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And, and it's so crazy that you're saying that because like, even for me, like, and I truly mean this and I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning of when we first uh, started talking, like, I just have an admiration for the versatility in what you bring, the skill set, and it's also the presence. Because people who don't know Coach April, like when Coach April is in a room and you can tell that she makes the task that's at hand, the task that's at hand. Mm. Can't, you can't, I can't get you off of like what you are set, you set, you set your mind to do. And I find I appreciate me, that. <laughs> and for me, I find I find that really cool. And you know, we talk about the versatility of just your experiences and everything. Like you're you're at the high school level, right? Mm-hmm. Um right now you're with the Crestwood junior team, right? Yep, as a head coach, yeah. And the head coach, head coach of the Crestwood junior team. You're um the director of analytics at the university level. Mm-hmm. Right? And you get the chance to I'm gonna is the is the the title. I want, I want to be really careful with the titles. I because because titles titles are important. I don't care what anybody That's says. True. Titles are important. Yeah. So you got the chance to do it um on the international yeah. stage as well. And was it director of analytics as well? Uh, uh, for so Global Jam, when U23. we U23, yeah, so Global Jam. Global Jam, technically, like on paper, my role is the video coordinator. Because mm-hmm. there's only one of me. Yeah. Um, but if we want to get technical, you could say that I managed or oversaw or led or directed, whatever. Um, just because we did have uh three other gentlemen who kind of did everything and supported the stats and analytics piece, but also supported on mm-hmm. court. Mm-hmm. Um but that was like my sole role was video coordinator. Um and with three X three my title on paper was coordinator of basketball operations, um, but then was brought on and given the opportunity to to be the head coach of the under 23 men's national team for 3x3. And then with the senior women's national team was sort of an assistant, but more of like a PA. So performance analyst mm-hmm. um, and video uh-huh. coordinator. So I had a lot of autonomy that way. So I guess you could just yeah. slide director on top of <laughs> a bunch of those as well. <laughs> for sure. So, so talk to me about the versatility of your skill set. Like, do you, like, down the line, when people look at, you know, Coach April down the line, and they're like, do you want them to know oh, wait, that you're... Hold on a second. Then you cut out for... Oh. 
Sorry. Hello? <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna do it through here. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. So, 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 do you want people to down the line see the versatility in your skill set, or do you rather maybe like master, like just stay in one lane? I think what, what, the mm -hmm. the trajectory of anyone's career is really like it's funny because I've been faced with this issue of you can only do one thing. Mm -hmm. right or this argument of like hey make sure that you narrow it because people need to know what you want to do mm -hmm. and in my mind it's like i find it very interesting that some people are like yo she coaches and then some people are like yo she's like high-end video coordinator mm -hmm. analytics whatever mm -hmm. and then the feedback depending on where it comes from i'm like that's so strange because i feel like you know me in both spaces or you know me in this space but how do you know about this so I, I am a firm believer in touch on everything if you can. Mm -hmm. Because one, you never know. Like I would have, if you asked me five, let's, let's take, if you asked me eight years ago, mm -hmm. before I even started with analytics or played with the idea with Canada basketball that, hey, April, you're going to be running with like sports code and analytics and that sport and synergy and faster and all these other things. I would have been like, you're crazy. Like, I'm a court coach. Like, I'm going to mm -hmm. be a head coach or I'm going to be an assistant. I'm going to whatever. If anything, I'll be player development. Um, But when I dabbled in this space, because I was like, they want someone. Canada basketball wants someone. They need someone. And I'm willing to, like, learn about this. Mm -hmm. Um, And the technology piece, or, like, that technology aspect to me, it's like playing a video game. So mm -hmm. I think versatility is key, especially when you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to do. Now, mm -hmm. if I look like 10 years down the line or even five, I think the versatility in in my skill set from understanding tacticals, technical strategy, now I can implement analytics, now I can implement personal or personalized like player development, um, everything kind of falls well under one umbrella. So if someone were like, hey, we're looking for a player development coach. Well, that was the first thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he said, here's how I can compound growth or learning for players and coaches through video and stats. And now I have the evidence to back it up when I'm putting players through drills or when I am doing a one-on-one -on -one session with a player. Um, and then obviously strategically and tactically, like having the assistant coaching position at TMU, um, being able to witness like Scott Morrison, Nathaniel Mitchell, like Jamie McNeely, Dave DeVero. Mm -hmm. These are like pro level coaches and mm -hmm. each of them are teaching something every season. So um, I don't think it's a bad thing to be, as versatile as you can be now obviously when you're getting into a job you have to have a calling card mm -hmm. right so if a nba team were to reach out to me right now me logically would say i can help you in analytics recruiting stats in a support role because i also have done my research on if i were to take up a certain type of analytics role i need to know how to like code in different languages and i need to know da data scraping and like all these things, which is why I'm applying to do a master's to cover mm -hmm. my bum that way. Right. So mm -hmm. versatility isn't bad. I just think that when you're given an opportunity, you have to be able to to live up to what the expectation is in that role. Mm -hmm. What have you learned from being in such a, and not only are we talking about the versatility of the skill set, but the versatility of being at multiple different levels, like being with, players who will start off the year at 14 years old right mm -hmm. and then being with professionals what have you learned yeah. from being through all of that similarities differences um, or just something or just or just new findings yeah i would say biggest similarity is the obsession of winning or getting better so the one thing that if i had to point anything out between the three levels, grassroots, youth sports, pro, is there, there every athlete 
that advances through the levels has an obsession or a mindset of being not necessarily the best, but the best that they can be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like if I look at Michelle and Catherine Plouf for 3x3, you're talking about like high level five on five players who, for whatever reason, moved over and crossed over to the other side um, mm-hmm. and still found a way to compete at a high level internationally for the country. In training camps, you're like, like the four of them or six or eight or whoever's invited to camp, they're running. You could damn near just let them run drills on their own. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and then on top of that, they're hiring trainers to work with them. Because as a pro, you need to do that. At the high school level here within OSBA or even U Sports, there's a very clear divide between those that get in the gym and those that don't outside mm-hmm. of practice. Right. At the OSBA level, it's the same thing. The kids that are more more likely or most likely to get a Division One scholarship, generically speaking, or generally speaking, are probably going to be those kids that work at overtime outside of team practice and not just like you come in and you shoot on a free hoop. It's like, I'm going to do 10 minutes of ball handling before I shoot. And I'm going to form shoot the crap out of the ball. And then I'm going to start moving out from the rim. Right. So Mm -hmm. that's like the biggest thing, the obsession to just be better. Mm -hmm. However you can be. Mm -hmm. Um, The one, I would say the difference and it's kind of true, but kind of not true is it's easy to coach pros because they understand the game in layers. Yeah. Whereas U sports, high school, like prep, basketball, um, grassroots, everything's very, I would say, individual and fundamental. Yeah. So, but... And I was thinking about this question today because Mm -hmm. trainers, and I'm saying generally speaking, not like specific trainers, Mm -hmm. but when we do skill sessions or camps or whatever, youth that go into these programs or even their like U10, U12 grassroots programs, their coaches more than likely are volunteer coaches who don't necessarily have a lot of experience with team concepts, whether it's spacing, whether it's the type of passing they're going to make, different cuts, uh, introduction to like different actions like spains and stacks and back cuts and 41 and whatever the case is, right? So I think it's easier to coach at the highest level. However, the era of athletes that you and I do with OSBA junior, senior, even a little bit of the U sport guys or girls, there is like a, like that era, I think that's graduating. They come from the era of one-on-one basketball Mm -hmm. and too much dribble or like really fundamental base where they have a hard time conceptualizing or thinking about spacing concepts or running and execution. And the only time that they can execute is when it's like, here is the play. So Mm -hmm. I might go a step further further to say that the youth now struggle with playing without sets and they struggle without playing one-on-one. So can you on the fly play in a pick and roll? Can you on the fly you know, punch a gap, reverse pivot, and like, how do you react to it? And all that kind of stuff. Exactly. So it's exactly what you're saying. Like the read and react stuff, like that's where I think basketball struggles right now at the youth level. So like that kind of in between Mm -hmm. what I've noticed, and I don't know about you, but what I've, what I've noticed with my girls in particular, they're very smart, like cerebral to the Mm -hmm. point where like they pick up things like nothing. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, cool. Like we understand how to space out with four out one in. We know how to play in a basic pick and roll, side pick and roll. We know what to do on a mid pick and roll, right? Like when we're off ball. So that would be the biggest difference in terms of like 
coaching pros or coaching at, at older ages, typically speaking, you would be able to teach faster on the fly because they'll just grasp yeah. everything. And everything is to win and everything is just minor tweaks. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then so. and then a lot of and then a lot of situations like some players can make you look good, you know, as a coach. Like yeah. oh. <laughs> oh my God. It's the best when you're like, do that again. And then it yeah. works. You're like, okay. That's not on me. That's on you guys. You just ran it right. Yeah, you look good. Holy. Uh Coach April, man, this is this is great, man. Talk to me. Um, future projects. Um, I know the summers are always busy for you, but what you got going on? Yeah. Um I know I'm a bit of a time crunch. So essentially, in essence, uh, doing starting up a video analytics breakdown mentorship. Um, so right now I'm doing like a research project and I've, I have two women on board with me. So I'm going to be teaching them a lot, but we're also going to be doing a lot of work. Um, that's more 3x3 based. And then summertime, just going to re-up uh, most likely with Canada basketball, see how I can impact and help impact 3x3 basketball as a whole. Um, and then from there, we'll just, we'll see what happens. I might get accepted mm -hmm. into my graduate program. I don't yeah. know. Uh, mm -hmm. and then obviously the back end, just prepare for, for next September with Crestwood and TMU. Yeah. Coach April Deuce, thank you so much for taking the time, man. You're the GOAT. You'll definitely be, we'll definitely talk, man. Cause every time I talk to you, I always learn a lot. So I appreciate you. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate our, you. I appreciate our ever, you know, growing friendship. I feel every time we meet, like we get another level in our friendship. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Here's, here's the leveling up. Appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right.